Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, I'm going to be doing a video on container gardening. This is a special request by someone, um, one of the subscribers, actually quite a few subscribers have asked about this and just wondering in general what the difference between cloth and plastic is, what kind of potting soil we should put into it, how to start seeds in it, and I'm here to give you all the details. But first, if you are super into container gardening, you wanna take notes and you want more details on this because I didn't contain all the details in this video, go check out my blog, gardeningincanada.net. I have a downloadable sheet, it is completely free, just click download, print it off, put it on your tablet, mark it up to high heaven, um, it's going to help you track essentially your container garden, everything from starting seeds, hardening the seeds off, transplanting them into the pots, what kind of pots to choose, the size of the pots you should choose, the year, the date, the zone. And my hope is that you will just reference back to that post every single year, print yourself off a new sheet in order to track your results, what worked, what didn't. It's just, it's a guide to help you with container gardening that I truly think you guys will appreciate so i'm super excited about the blog you guys i'm so excited to give you guys free resources that you can print off and follow along with these videos i think it's going to be an enormous help for so 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 many of you and i actually really really truly enjoy making them to begin with so anyways let's jump into container gardening the ins and the outs how to choose a pot size and everything else so step one to a container garden is truly picking a container um, you can choose plastic, ceramic, or cloth. Now, if you choose plastic, you might wanna check out my safe plastics video that I did talking about the numbers on the bottom of the packages and which ones are food safe for putting vegetables into and growing plants in because plants can hyperaccumulate certain toxins, including um, polymers from plastic so be sure to check that out I also have that on the printout as well kind of the safe zone ones that you can utilize one thing to note with plastic is that they can get heavy they do crack and break over time just because of Sun freeze thaw that sort of thing and they're very very clunky now I think the future is going to actually be cloth now whether that be hemp woven cloth or a plastic version of cloth. I think that is the future because if you live in an apartment or a small home and you don't have a ton of storage, cloth is the way to go because they are completely com com um, collapsible. Also, if you're elderly or you have some sort of a disability where you can't lift heavy things or move heavy things, cloth is also the way to go because it has the straps on it and it is generally pretty lightweight. So with that being said, I'm going to link some cloth products down below. I found a really good deal on um, a pack of 10 for only like 20 some dollars. That's actually pretty, pretty good for a five gallon cloth baggie. So that's something that you guys might wanna check out. But ultimately with a cloth pot, there are some extreme benefits to that. One being the inability to overwater because we have so much air exchange, we have high rates of evapotranspiration, which doesn't happen typically in a plastic pot. So we will have to water daily, but that also means that we're not gonna end up with a root rot. And because of that extra airflow, we're going to have high microbial activity and we're going to have very, very happy roots, which ultimately means very happy upper biomass. Now, the other thing that cloth pots give us is the ability for airflow and the inability to capture heat plastic pots can get warm and when the soil gets warm not only do the roots suffer in some cases but the microbes suffer and when the microbes suffer what ends up happening is we have low nutrient turnover and low nutrient cycling ultimately that can result in nutrient deficiencies especially if we're trying to stay organic and using manures and compost where we need those microbes to do some work for us or even if we're using a granular, either organic or inorganic version, where again, we need some microbial activity to break that product down in order to make it bioavailable for the plant. So that is something to keep in mind. Cloth is going to 
bridge that gap that we have typically seen in container gardening over the years. The size of the pot, this doesn't actually matter. And I know that sounds weird, but I've grown peppers, I'll insert a photo here, in very, very small containers, and I got tons of chili peppers off these things. And I've grown tumbler tomatoes, if you watched my videos from last summer, in hanging baskets that were not big whatsoever, but the plant was huge. And it honestly depends on your lifestyle and how often you want to water. So if you want to set it and forget it, you're gonna wanna go with a bigger container. So for a tomato plant, as an example, if you wanna water every three days, I'd probably go to about a 10 gallon tomato plant container. If you want to water every day and you wanna be out there on a regular basis, five gallons is more than enough for an adult tomato or pepper plant. If you want to be there once a week, you're gonna probably wanna go with a 30 or a 40 gallon container per tomato plant. Something to keep in mind though is even if you set it and forget it with those larger ones, roots tend to enjoy, especially with a pepper plant, enjoy some root boundness in order to send out the flowers and the peppers. So to make this happen, we do have to stick with a smaller container. If you want fruits and vegetables sooner in the year, I highly suggest staying on the smaller side and putting in the work of watering on a regular basis. For the soil, you can just use a regular potting soil. Try to stay away from adding too much wood chips or rocks or leca or anything that's going to add aeration. While it seems like a good idea in the beginning because you're having low water utilization compared to the plant that's in the pot, just because the plant isn't big enough, as the season goes on, you will have very high water utilization, especially if you're staying in the smaller container range, and therefore, you're going to run out of water quick and you may need to water twice a day if you make it too porous or too good well draining. So out of the box, potting soil is actually best for containers because it has that moisture holding content that we need, especially later on in this season. Now, in the early stages of the season, you're probably thinking I'm over watering. Don't worry, garden plants are so active when it comes to growing, it's very high highly unlikely. If you have drainage, if it's a cloth pot or it's a plastic pot with holes in the bottom, it is very unlikely that you will wa overwater anything, even if you water every single day. And I can say that with absolute confidence. Comment down below if you water every single day. I can guarantee you the guys with the, the miraculous gardens, they do, 100% they do. So with that being said, something that you may want to consider is adding a compost or a manure. Typically per one bale of um, potting soil, you can add in one or two uh, compost or manure bags. That's generally a good rate. If you want to reuse your potting soil, then yes, do that, revitalize it. Peat moss potting soil is not a renewable resource. I reuse mine every single year. Check out my video on that if you don't know how to do that, but it is definitely something that you may want to look into. It's gonna save you huge cash, and environmentally, it is much more sound. Something else that you may wanna try with this soil side is actually mulching the top of the container. Maybe not in the first portion of the season, but later on in the season where you're noticing exponential rates of water usage in order to help lock in as much moisture as possible and reduce the amount that is um, evaporating off the soil surface, a mulch may be a good idea. The other thing that the mulch will do is it's going to keep those leaves up off the soil, especially with tomatoes and peppers, lettuce, even things of that nature. And it's just gonna be a cleaner plant that ultimately will have less pest issues as well. So a mulch is a great idea. And then for an absolute pro tip, if you have a tomato or a pepper, something larger, corn, something of much greater height, sunflower, that sort of thing, try intercropping or try a cover crop within your pot. Two things are gonna happen. If you choose like an alfalfa or a pea, some sort of legume, you're going to end up with nitrogen fixing, which ultimately is not only gonna benefit your soil for the years to come, because it's going to add nitrogen into it, 
but you're also going to end up with available nitrogen within that season that's going to exponentially help your current crops that you're trying to grow in your container garden. Now, it's going to look super, super full, and you have to understand that you're going to have to water even more because you're going to have more plants in there. So something to look at, something to consider, even if you try it with just one pot, you might like it and you may want to try it year after year. Try your own science experiment. Do one with and do one without. See what happens. For things like herbs, lettuce, um, or root vegetables, you're going to want to go with about 24 inches depth minimum. You could go for a little bit less with the herbs and the lettuce, but depending on the density in which you plant it, they tend to dry out again a little bit sooner later on in the season. So I suggest 24 inches depth. The I personally don't like using circular pots for whatever reason with herbs, lettuce, or root vegetables. I prefer long and narrow or square. And I don't know if it's just the way my brain works when it comes to um, thinning out the seeds or just mathematically in my mind it works better to know like if you do a 24 by 24 by 24 it's going to give you it's much easier to do the math as to how many plants you can have within that container with this circle it's a little bit more difficult and it always gets kind of awkward to the end when it comes to thinning so i personally like square and rectangle but some people like circle so there's no reason why you can't but yes, you can do root veggies in containers. That is all I have for you guys on container gardening. If this helps you out, please let me know in the comments down below. Please comment down below what hacks have worked for you and which ones haven't and why. Let's help each other out with container gardening. Let people know what you've grown, how you've grown it, whether or not it worked, and what secrets or tweaks you wanna make the following years or that you have made to succeed with that crop. A lot of us live in small yards and apartments. They just have balconies. Let's share experiences on how to make this work. Food security, I think is so important. And I think gardening in general is very, very empowering. From little children all the way to adults, we can, we can get something out of gardening. So I want everyone to try gardening. So this is, this is an, a gateway. This is the entry into having an acreage possibly one day or a yard that looks like a, a mini farm so <laughs> this is the gateway drug to gardening let's just say that i want to thank you guys for watching i will talk to you guys next time bye